Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. So today, a welcome to uh, our daily um, uh, Chandamoli Maharaj's uh, online class. And today we will be continuing discussing the wonderful pastimes of Dhamma Dalila from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 9, uh, Verse 4. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. <clears throat> so, continuation of the chapter, verse number four. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tamsanam Kama Asadya Matnatam Jananam Harihi Viva Dari Matanam Nasada Pritam Avyahan While Mother Yasoda was turning butter, Lord Krishna desired to drink the milk of her breast appear before her in order to increase her transcendental pleasure. He caught hold of the churning rod and began to prevent her from churning. Mm -hmm. Purport. Krishna was sleeping within the room. As soon as he got up, he became hungry and went to his mother. Wanting to stop her from churning and drink the milk of her breasts, he stopped her from moving the churning rod. Mm -hmm. Next. Tamakam Tamankam Marudam Apayatistanam Satam Sneham Slutam Sasmitim Ekshatamukam Adriptam Usrishya Javena Sayaya Utsi Chamane Pasya Seed for this disregard. Translation. Mother Yasoda then embraced Krishna, allowed him to sit down in her lap, and began to look upon the face of the Lord with great love and affection. <clears throat> because of her intense affection, milk was flowing from her breast. But when she saw that the milk fan on the cauldron was boiling over, she immediately left her son to take care of the overflowing milk, although the child was not fully satisfied with drinking milk and his mother's breath. Simply. Everything in the household affair of Mother Yasoda was meant for Krishna. <clears throat> Although Krishna was drinking the breast milk of his mother Yasoda, when she saw the milk pan in the kitchen was overflowing, she had to care of it immediately, take care of it immediately, and thus she left the sun. She then became very angry, not having been fully satisfied with drinking the milk of her breast. Sometimes one must take care of more than one item of important business for the same purpose. Therefore, Mother Yasoda was not unjust when she left her son to take care of the overflowing milk. On the platform of love and affection, it is the duty of the devotee to one to do one thing and then the other thing later. The proper intuition by which one does this is given by Krishna. Esham Satata Yutanam Bhajitam Pritipur Vakam Vadami Buri Vam Tam Yemam Mupayantika Yenamam Mupayantika In Krishna consciousness, everything is dynamic. Krishna guides the devotee in what to do first and what to do next on the platform of absolute truth. 
‫ומגם שלא גם דרכי הגנה ‫שאינה עשרה כאלה. ‫כך שאין מרית ארנונה ‫בטקס מונטי ורבים ורבים. ‫כלומר, אום וישנו ודאי, ‫בשנה ישראל ויתרה, ‫שמח כיבת כיבדם ‫שפרם ומתאים למסי ‫שרשם כיבור זה. ‫כל הבעלי פצ'רי נאמר ‫לטוב ועשרים יבואים נגיד, ‫רשיית ידי ופצ'רי נאמר. ‫כיוון שכל פצ'רי נאמר ‫רשיית פיתה נאמר ‫שאי בצ'ר, ‫שפיתה נאמר ‫בעבלי דו ועשרי זו נאמר נאמר. ‫דאי פיפש נאמר ‫תמיה פביא נאמר נאמר, ‫שאי הבית הגדת הרשיבה ‫שאיבר בסדים נאמר. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, So, Madhya Soda, because she was fully absorbed in Krishna, that everything she does is for Krishna. Being in the mood of mother, she takes care of her child with love, affection, and great attention for the child's welfare, for the child's pleasure. And this is how a devotee thinks. Sometimes we can't or we don't project that behind everything a devotee does in devotional service, it's being received by the Lord or being received by the spiritual master and then offered to the Lord. <clears throat> so, and sometimes we just do things because they need to be done. And the fact that they need to be done is the fact that we should do them. Let's see if you're, say you're constructing a building, takes planning, takes the commission of a organization to do the work, and then they have to gather the materials, and then they have to give you the price. So you're, you're dealing with so many different aspects, but the goal is to get a nice building. Although all of the intricacy that it takes is, uh, seems to be very much mundane, but it's all devotional service because the goal is Krishna consciousness. So Mother Yasoda apparently did something that Krishna didn't like. But again, again, it seems like here it says, because everything that was for Krishna, Mother Yasoda did, and therefore she was not unjust when she left her son to take care of the overflowing milk. So the Acharya, in this case, Shiva Prabhupada, is saying she acted rightly, but then Krishna didn't see that. So we have an apparently dichotomy between two things. Krishna was thinking, where did my mother go? She was here. And now she's gone. So therefore, he became angry. And he bit his lip. And he decided to do some mischief just to make himself again noticed by his mother. And that'll be unfolded in as the world. But the point is, Krishna wasn't happy. So did she satisfy Krishna by reason? Or did she uh, not satisfy Krishna when she got when she left? Sometimes a devotee will be doing a particular service. It'll be appreciated by some senior devotees and other senior devotees who <laughs> have a different opinion of their same service. That is the way of devotional service sometimes. Of course, whatever the spiritual master ordains, and 
if we are focused on pleasing the spiritual master in whatever we do, then the offering is only success, uh, acceptable because the desire to please makes the offering acceptable. And the desire to please also allows one to give maximum attention and care to the offering, to the activities of the offering. So here we have an interesting situation. But we can understand Mother Yasoda was only acting for Krishna in every situation. But Krishna wanted to make a point. <laughs> and here, Prabhupada says something interesting, and I think devotees may also find this. It's, you may have many things to do in relationship to a particular service. And all of these are points of, of attention. But we can only do one thing at a time. So we do one thing. And how do we remember what to do next? And that he says here that Krishna actually gives that intelligence. Oh, you see, oh, the devotee wants to do this service. And this is what the devotee is thinking of how to do it. Or that even may even extend to the devotee's own activities, which are maybe in relationship to taking care of his personal needs. Krishna is always there reminding the devotee, oh, you want us to do this. Oh. This is next on your list. So Krishna is there. And that thought that comes into the mind, which reveals the thought that we had prior to performing the activity, that's Krishna. Sometimes we think, well, it's my intelligence. But Krishna says, I'm the intelligence of the intelligence. We think that, well, it's due to my planning. But one can never plan accordingly unless Krishna gives the complete understanding on how to do it. And so Krishna is behind everything. Therefore, this verse, Deshan Satyata Yukta Onam, Majitam Priti Purvakam, Tadami Bhuriyodam, Yenamam Upiyantite. Bring the verse up a little, a little higher and bring the other way, keep going into the other way. Keep going, keep going. Okay, right there. It oh, went too far. Back down, back down, back down, 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 down. Center the whole verse and purport onto the screen. It's easy to do that. To center the whole verse and purport. No, not that. The whole verse and purport on the screen. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. No, no. Don't change the font. I can't read it now. Keep the font on the same side. Now, now get rid of the transliteration. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, get rid yeah. of the transliteration. I have to teach devotees how to use the computer. They don't know how to use it. They bounce all over the place. You, Maharaj, want you, to, you only want to see the translate. You want to get rid of the transliteration? Just start with the very top of the page with the translation. But that's not the verse. You have to go to the next verse, number five. Put verse number five up. There you go. Now, get, go all the way to the translation at the top of the page. Put the translation at the top of the page. Keep going up. One more. Bounce it again. One more. Okay, there you go. You see, you got the whole verse and translation there nicely. And you can make it a bigger size too. Make it big, one big size. Increase the font. Okay. Go up the page again. 
Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Did you see? It's very precision, but you did it. See how that is perfect? Everything is there. You can see the whole purport and the translation. That's how things should be done. <laughs> okay. So here, Krishna says, he guides the devotee in what to do first, what to do next on the transcendental platform. So this is a feature of Krishna's mercy, as he says that this verse here that is quoted is one of the most important verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Why is it important? Because Prabhupada doesn't give the translation. But the translation is Pesham uh, Satyuta, but one who worships me in devotion, one who engages in devotional service and worships me with love, I give them the understanding by which they can come to me. So the word pretty means love, Bhajitan means worship. So one who worships Krishna with love, the Dami Bhuti, I give the intelligence how they can come to me, Upayantite. So our efforts are part of these process of devotional service. And when it's combined with pleasing Krishna, which is an element of love, Satisfying Krishna or satisfying Krishna's pure devotee, the spiritual master. Or we may even take it farther when we try to satisfy the, the general mass of devotees in our activity, such as in kirtan. Sometimes we, we, we want to inspire the devotees in kirtan, so we remain enthusiastic in the kirtan as an inspiration. <clears throat> for all the other devotees. We don't think, oh, I'm enthusiastic because I want to be, you know, I want to get the mercy. No, we also think I want to be enthusiastic because this will inspire others to become enthusiastic. So a devotee is always thinking how to perform their service that Krishna, spiritual master, the devotees, will somehow or other be pleased and will be benefit by whatever activities they do, because the whole process of devotional service is the mood of service. And here we're seeing the ideal servant in the mood of Patsayaras. In the previous verses, Prabhupada indicates that if you want to become perfect in Vatsayaras, study carefully, not only Yasoda's activities, but offer bodily features also. And that will help one become more and more aware of how one should serve the Supreme Lord in the role of a mother, a father, an elder. So this is, uh, this is Krishna consciousness. And we have so many activities to perform and we should always be aware, just like sometimes we get overwhelmed with the amount of the activities, and sometimes two or three things appear at the same time in order to get attention. Just like there was one statement by Monthly Porter, the famous Mother Teresa. Maybe not all of you know her, but she was a great saint following the Christian tradition, tradition. And she was not only limited to Christianity, she acknowledged also other religious activities, but she was uh, very much devoted in the mood of a, of a servant. And therefore, uh, although she was so elderly, she worked harder than all of the young ladies that she was training under her. But when she was asked by one reporter, Mother Teresa, how, how do you help so many people? 
you know, you're doing such amazing work, you're helping so many people become God conscious, overcome their poverty, overcome their depression due to poverty, loneliness. He said, in a very simple eye, simple eye, simple answer, one at a time. <laughs> and that, that particular statement that she made is really important because it indicates focus. She was always focused on what she was doing, although she had so much to do, or she allowed herself so much service to be done. But she always did everything in the best possible way because she understand that is devotion. Not simply getting the job done, but doing it specifically when dealing with people. Specifically when she was dealing with people. How do you help so many people? One at a time. I mean, she's completely focused. So here we see Mother Yusoda, she's completely focused on Krishna. And everything that it takes to serve Krishna and ultimately to please Krishna, she lives through that. There's no other, there's no other activity. And it's interesting that partic this particular pastime that took place was that Rohini, who was always with Mother Yusoda, went to a function that particular day. There was a particular ceremony, and Rohini was not present, who would usually help uh, Mother Yusoda with her activity. And at the same time, the maid servants didn't show up that day. So she was all alone with Krishna that day. And therefore, when the milk boiled over, there was no one there to tend to the milk except herself. Uh, it's interesting we we'll read that mm -hmm. in other narrations of the past time how it was an unusual situation that Rohini was always there, but that day she was, and all of the other maid servants who assist her were also not there that day. So this was set the stage for this particular fasting of Krishna uh, mysteriously stealing butter and making a mess of the whole church. <laughs> so, uh, and when Krishna makes a mess, it's nice. Because his making a mess means to focus our mind and our minds become purified. When someone makes a mess around us, or we make a mess, <laughs> then our consciousness also becomes messy. <laughs> when Krishna does it, it's transcendental because everything he does, it doesn't matter what Krishna does. It doesn't matter. Krishna does things that other incarnations would never do because that is their, not their particular role in their incarnation. So Krishna, he's just, he's spontaneous, but he acts out of love. And okay, so he's spontaneously doing benefit to everyone at all times. And therefore he gives them pleasure by acting in this mischievous way just to, um, Show that mischievousness, you see that children have mischievousness. I just like there's one, <laughs> I just remember there's one devotee family here, very nice family. And they have this little child who's about two months, two years or a few months old, can't stay still. Nobody can keep him still. His father can't keep him still, his mother can't keep him still. He's always running all over the place, picking up things, pushing things around, and running this way, running that way. He does it all the time. <laughs> and he's not smiling when he's doing it. So he's just doing it like he just wants to crash everything in the house. <laughs> he came to my apartment yesterday, <laughs> and the poor family wanted to speak to me, but they couldn't. 
It would be you were chasing the child all over the house. <laughs> so <laughs> I was reminded a little bit of the mischievousness. So Prabhupada would say, where do you get this mischievous nature is coming from Krishna. <laughs> Krishna is the best in every category. So it comes out in little children also. And sometimes even grown-ups sometimes become like that. <laughs> but it's because it's part of Krishna, because we are part of Krishna, it's also found within the soul also. In the spiritual world, the coward boys, they play all kinds of crazy games. They even invent new games. They make up games as they go along, playing games. And some of the games are just, you know, you can't even understand what they're doing. It doesn't have any logic, apparently, but it's a lot of fun for all of us because they're just playing. And that's uh, that's the spiritual world. So, so that, that quality is there in Krishna's friends. It's also there in the gopis. Who like to tease Krishna sometimes by stealing his flute uh, by uh, by uh, calling him various names. <laughs> so that's you know that that nature is uh, but it's done out of love in the spiritual world. We can't imitate that because. Unless we come to the purified platform, then it becomes natural. If it's not natural, then it's not it's not Krishna consciousness. And even if it's natural, but it's not in relationship to Krishna, then it's also money. Okay, so there's a although this purple is very short, it's packed with spiritual knowledge. And this verse from the 10th canto, 10th chapter, 10th chapter of the 10th uh, Bhagavad Gita is very, very essential. It's one of the, what is called the nutshell verses. That means it reveals the essential truth of Krishna consciousness. Okay, we'll stop there. Thank you, Maharaj, for explaining this uh, very wonderful verse for most, one of the most uh, blissful pastimes of Krishna. And I think, you know, one of the things that you said was quite important that Mother Yashoda always wants to serve and please Krishna. But Krishna in this verse is also trying to make us a point to use our intelligence to determine uh, what service should be prioritized. But at the same way, you also explained very nicely how... Uh, there is a, an element of mischief in there as well. So that was very nice. Um, and also, Maharaj, what you said is that, you know, all our sincere efforts towards devotional service should be with love. Um, effort has to be combined with love so that we are always endeavoring to please Guru and Krishna and always be aware of, of, of such consciousness. So thank you, Maharaj. Uh, dear devotees, um, I would appreciate. It would be a very uh, good if you can... Turn on your cameras. Uh, we can make the session more interactive, more lively, and also more personal. Um, and um, please uh, share your realization questions on one of these most uh, important aspects. And I'm sure you'll have wonderful questions. And I've got a few as well about service and about uh, the principles that Maharaj explained through the, the purpose today. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like to just add one thing. To perform devotional service with love is a stage of development. But the elements that make up love must be applied, otherwise we won't get there. And what are those elements? To do your service with great attention and with great care. Love may not be there, but these are qualities that reflect a loving devotee with attention, Care. Persons who are art artists are very finely, their, their focus on the finer things of presenting an artistic uh, display. So
So that takes, uh, that, that is a certain type of mentality that is really fixed on detail and but seeing the whole thing before it happens, like being very attentive to what is being done and at the same time offering as much care in performing it. And of course, then their artistic ability starts to manifest and then you have a beautiful picture. Nowadays, you ever see today's art, they take a pole and they put it in the ground and we take a, a fender from a, from a car and stick it somewhere in the middle of the pole. And we take somebody's uh, hat and stick it on the thing. And then they took they take some boards and they put it in different positions. And then they paint, painted a different colors in different place. And we just throw the paint on. It's not even painted on, it's just thrown. And I say, oh, this is art. Oh, so beautiful. Modern art. It reflects a, 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 a disturbed mind. That's all it does. <laughs> so then when you see that, you know, hey, we're in Kali Yuga. Then you know Kali Yuga is here. When people can say that that is art, that is Kali Yuga. <laughs> And they take an old tire and stick it on a branch of a tree and you know hang a rope from it and then they do it they add a few other things this way and that way they put it on some park display oh and people come to me ah, look at that so nice it's like what Dolphin would say that if you walk into a dirty place and you don't and you don't feel disturbed because the place is dirty. That means your mind is of the same nature as the place. <laughs> so you know, so when you, the art today is like uh, crazy. Now, I'm not an expert in that. Well, we have, we do have experts. And one such person is here today, but I leave him to her to speak, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, back to our theme of putting care and attention into something. Thank you, Maharaj. That was a, a very important uh, aspect of the verse today. Thank you for clarifying it. Dear devotees, um, any questions, realizations? Uh, you can also put it in the chat window and I can read it out um, as well. Maharaj, whilst the devotees uh, think I have a question, um, I think this is very important because when we are in service, uh, there are conflicting priorities and there are two different service authorities and both the service are of equal important nature. And then we have to get those things done. Um, how do we then take directions? Because we are not, at least I'm not at a platform of, and I can recognize what Krishna is saying through the super soul. Um, to, to, to use that intelligence, but when we are faced with those situations, how do I, on, on, on that level, uh, deal with it? Because they're, they're both well, important. In ways, but it all comes down to intelligence. We can either try to remember what Srila Prabhupada said in regards to the situation we're in, and then try to apply that knowledge to our to understanding how to proceed. Because everything Prabhupada, every Prabhupada gave us everything. And if we don't listen to Prabhupada, we don't read his book, we remain on the mental platform. <laughs> Our, if one is not able to complete the summary, then 
it should be very, uh, what we say, profitable to ask someone who you know can answer your question, who's good at whatever you want to, want to get done. Like if you want to manage something and you're not sure how to do it, you might contact a good manager, someone who knows how to manage. If you want to know, if you want to learn about kirtan, learn and go to someone who's who does kirtan regularly and who's who knows the art of kirtan along with the mood of kirtan. If you want some medical advice, then you you enter into that field of inquisitive. So uh, yeah, that ultimately will give you the situation. Now on the spot, sometimes we're on the spot and we have to react. And then we just have to use our intelligence and depend on Krishna. Like today, I uh, I had to walk from where I was to we took Prabhupada Samadhi, and it was at least four or five kilometers. And so I came out of my room, and then I didn't realize that last night it really rained. And so the roads were just full of water. I mean, it was like rivers of water on the roads. And where, where I am, there's all holes in the road. <laughs> and so there was puddles everywhere. And, you know, I was thinking, oh, no. And I really started. I got a little ways. And so I'm walking so slowly, carefully, chanting and praying at the same time. I don't wind up with coming one with the puddles. And so I kept moving. And I was just thinking, it's going to be slow. I may not even get there. And then Krishna sent someone who was coming the opposite way. He was going the way I was coming, and he said, "Oh, Maharaj, on a ride, and put a, put his pulled over his motorbike, big smile on his face, and get on." And I hopped on the back of the back of the bike, and of course, we were still going through the puddles <laughs> and the holes. <laughs> so I was thinking, I "Hope we don't, you know, slide this way or that way." But I trusted the driver. And everything turned out nice. <laughs> and so um, that was a situation that, you know, you run into situations that you don't expect or they come upon you. It happens, you get, you get at least one or two every day, if not more. <laughs> you see what life is. And uh, Remembering Krishna, praying to Krishna, and using your intelligence how to deal with the situation in the best possible way is Krishna consciousness. Well, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for that. I think one of the things that you said is quite very important is once you take that decision, then you need to have faith in Krishna after you do that. Otherwise, you'll always doubt. Krishna is always there for the devotee. The devotees should be taking shelter of Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. And sometimes Krishna puts a devotee into a little difficult situation. It seems like he's not there. It's not true, but it's the apparent feeling that he's not there because sometimes we want an immediate solution to our situation. But he lets the devotee struggle through it sometimes. But he's always there with the devotee while the devotee is struggling through it. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Scarlett Mataji, uh, you have a question. Please unmute and go ahead. Hi, Krishna. Please accept my reverence here. Says, all glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to you. Your Holiness Chandramuni. Um, 
I will give you a very short scenario. So, and I need your help to tell me how you, how, how do you like me to do in this situation? Uh, let us say that there is a temple situ mosque. We say, we say mosque. There is a mosque and there is some things it should be done, uh, but there is not very well organized. Uh, the person who is uh, uh, temple president, it's so many kilometers in another place, have not, nothing, no idea what's going on there. But then uh, me, I'm got old and I have been in, um, in this, situation very long. I have done many, many services. I know how to do it so that it's going to be good. And I do it. And then this president has someone who he trusts very much, make this person to scream and get angry at me in front of everybody, everybody who are not uh, devotees, who are there just for uh, being there, be screamed at that nothing should be done before you have get you have I have said it I have I should decide uh, to what to do but me who I'm old and I have done so many years I have done everything and everything I do it's only to please Krishna only to do uh, uh, the <laughs> <laughs> to do everything I can to do my, my service, what should I do? Should I not to do the service because there is somebody who wants to have a power, who, has, who wants to say, yes, it's me who has said to you, to you do that, you do that, you do that, and then uh, wait and still nothing happened because this person who is uh, going to decide, it comes very, very, very late to the mosque. And then everybody has to wait because he has the power. He has to decide. It's not, uh, it, it, that, for me, it's look like, it, I'm not here to please Krishna. I'm here to please the, uh, the chief or to the temple presidents. I don't know what, again, agent, agent. You know what I mean? How do I have to do not to do the service, even though it's only for that in nothing else, not, I don't have any, any, any other expectation to do just to the service or not to do anything because I'm afraid because the chief is going to scream at me in front of everybody. Which one would you like me to do? <laughs> I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't go to that mosque anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that is okay. okay. So it's not good to be in that temple, a uh, mosque. Obviously it doesn't, uh, even if he was in an authoritative position, he shouldn't. When, he, when it comes to uh, correcting someone, he doesn't get someone to scream at them in public. That is humiliating and that is not necessary. That's very cruel. So why would you be around such people? I wouldn't even know that. Even in our society, if someone does something wrong, it should be done in confidence in terms of correction. It's not you make a big public display of correcting somebody just to make them even more humiliated and feel bad. Yeah, that we discussed that in uh, in Guru disciple dealings. We had a Guru Sangha, and that was one of the concerns that the Gurus should not chastise, humiliate, nearly humiliate their disciples in a public way because it's bad for the disciple and it's not good for the guru. Nothing is accomplished like that. It's just insensitive. The idea is that there's some idea of making some correction or giving some 
words of direction should then be done privately with the person involved and not in a public forum where people, other people have no idea what's going on in the first place. So the whole way that was handled was really not at all, uh, not even what to speak of spiritual, it was not even materially uh, good from any point of view. So if that experience happened, and I was involved, I would never go back to the film. So, to try to correct those persons would doesn't sound like they're correctable. Just distance yourself. Therefore, this devotee only, even if he runs into that kind of situation, he tries not to make it worse and just accepts and then maybe, okay, they don't appreciate my service. They didn't even listen to you when you tried to explain why you did what you did, right? Didn't want to hear it. So what's the use of being in such association with such people? They're not qualified to lead. They're not qualified to correct. Stay away. <laughs> Unless you really want to be there. I I I am so grateful that I have learned about this, uh, Krishna Kasha says, and I'm trying to do my best to learn, to study, to do everything I can to chant. Uh, and I have to thank two person who from day one really was there and asked, answered all my questions. It's thank to them that I am here that I am. But unfortunately, I'm not going to have, uh, I, I don't get to continue to have this feeling that I'm going there and I will do this because they teach me what to do. But they themselves, they are decided to not to be here. They are decided to go away because of such things happen. And I feel so bad, so sad. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh -huh. uh, because it's another tradition, I can't really say too many things that we should do. But it doesn't seem like they appreciate you. <laughs> You appreciate someone, and you will. Uh, you may correct them, but in a way that is uh, loving and care careful, not just to blast them and make them feel, you know, like completely useless. Well, learn from learn from these situations in life and move on. But in Krishna consciousness, devotees are men, even leaders. Of course, we make mistakes in our movement too. We heavy people out sometimes. And we do it in the, in the same way. We're not so free from that. But we're learning. In the early days, it was more common, things like that would happen. But now, as the society is growing, the devotee care, the money relationships become more of the foundation for what everything we do in our Krishna consciousness. When we first started, 
our movement where we have projects over people. One scholar in our movement. He, was very, he wrote a book also. And he made that point that this is one of the problems in our movement is that we put, we put the projects over the people. In other words, the projects are there, find the people to put in them. Doesn't matter, even if that person can't last, they'll get another one. But the point was the point I gave was get get the job done. And he made that point. And because of that, there was many devotees who were getting discouraged. People were becoming offended. And actually, after even some of the projects were not developing because it's people who make up the projects and not simply the projects are meant for the to be uh, people are meant to be used for the project. Projects are meant to benefit everyone. And so how to engage people in the project in such a way that they feel uh, you know inspired. And then because of that, after about 40 years in our movement, we started to develop the devotee care system, which began in the late 1990s. And now it's still going. That caring for devotees, seeing the needs of the devotees, um, learning how to engage devotees, uh, dealing with devotee problems in a very personal way. All of this has now become more of a part of our movement. Projects are still there and projects are developing. But a lot of the success of projects now is because when you have happy devotees, you have successful projects. And so we're still in that transition stage. It still has a huge fruition and perfection, but it's moving in that direction. It's about the devotees. There's one statement the length, and the, the length and breadth of an organization depends on the quality of people in the organization. The organization is not distinct from the people in it. In fact, the people in it are the organization. Mm -hmm. So if you have people who are incompetent, legal, people who are in positions who don't know how to take care of the devotees, don't know how to correct the devotees, and then that organization won't have many people that will uh, start to uh, Thank you, Mataji, for asking a very personal question, and uh, thank you. Uh, Maharaj Namrata Mataji has asked a question in the chat window. Her question is, uh, Hare Krishna, my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru and Gauranga. Prabhupada, in one of his letters, say, Krishna conscious person must be seen by ears and not by eyes. How to understand this? I am not able to understand complete essence. Please share your views on the same. Well, Bob, I would use the example. You see a guy walking along the street. He's got a beautiful smile on his face. He's got a flowing beard and a very nicely tapered flowing robe. His teeth, his tea lock is so expertly placed. And he walks around in a very graceful manner. And then when, but when he speaks, he speaks all nonsense. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a person who doesn't know, I say, oh, look at that, real saintly person. And then you have to hear what they have to say. And then you can tell. A fool is never disclosed until he opens his mouth. A wise man speaks only when it's required. 
and not for the sake of making a show or speaking just for the sake of speaking. So yeah, hearing is a more direct means than seeing. A direct means to knowledge. Knowledge is given, gotten by hearing. Those who learn the art of hearing will also be able to speak properly. So hearing fine tunes the mind and allows one to think about what is being heard. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. God bless us. Thank you. We have uh, Revati Mataji, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Prabhuji. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. I just have a clarification, Guru Maharaj. We mentioned like the uh, Mother Teresa, how you know she made so many people Krishna conscious, like you mentioned, like one at a time. So, like uh, when it comes to devotional service, quality versus quantity. So we have to focus more on quality, Guru Maharaj, because uh, we see like so many devotees, so much uh, services they'll be doing. And uh, uh, some devotees cannot do so much quantity, but uh, whatever you're doing, can we just focus on the quality and... Uh, 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 focusing on the quality doesn't mean an excuse for not doing more. <laughs> And in many cases, quantity inspires quality. Like there's chanting, the more you chant, the better chance you have to qualitize your chanting. The more you work at a particular activity, the better you get at it. So quantity supports quality but it shouldn't be in place of, that's the point. Mm -hmm. okay. So if we increase the quantity, the quality will come to merge. That's what I have understood. Like, mm -hmm. if, we increase, if we increase the quantity of the devotion service, then quality will improve. So that's- Up to a certain, up to a certain point, when you, you have to make sure that your quantity is not taking away from your quality. Mm -hmm. I'm doing so many things, but I'm just getting them done because I got so many things done. Mm -hmm. so pushing through or trying to get many things done. And then, then the quality starts to uh, you know, be lessened. Okay. So, Guru Maharaj, you mentioned like one at a time. So, when you increase your quantity, so we also need to um, like uh, uh, whatever service we are doing, we have to do with love also. So, love, we, love, yeah, we may, I explained that love may not come or it's because you want to do something with love, but there are qualities that make up the quality of love characteristics that make up the quality of life, such as attention, mm -hmm. care, thoughtfulness. You know, to be thoughtful about what you're doing, why you're doing it, or even before you're doing it. These are all, these are all characteristics that will help build the quality of love because all of these are supportive of the idea of offering nice service to Krishna. We want to do things in the most nicest way. And Prabhupada would also say that. Only the best is for Krishna. 
Sorry. I didn't get that. Gurvaj, sorry. Pass one. Only the best is the best. Okay. Yes. So there's some people who, is, who are very thoughtful, who are very uh, reflective, more introspective. There's others who are more extroverted, more spontaneous. Both of them can perform devotional service because all they have to do is align their activities with their nature. And then they can, you'll see there's people who who move around very fast, <laughs> but yeah. still, it doesn't take away from their quality. And other people try to imitate that, and they may just do something, you know, low class. So the scriptures say, know thyself. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. So being attentive and focused and uh, all these things are very important. And thoughtful. Yeah, just like I'm speaking. If you're listening to every word, mm -hmm. then you're, you're with me. Mm -hmm. If your mind goes in and out, sometimes you're with me and sometimes you're not. That means, you know, you're, we're missing something. Mm -hmm. And that's true when we kind of converse with others too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. It all comes back to hearing. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Again, comes back to hearing. So, yeah. This daily call is helping me to, you know, improve my hearing process. So, very nice. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? So, Maharaj, if there are none, uh, we are 10 minutes past the hour. Um, is it okay to conclude the class? Yeah. There is a small announcement. Uh, tomorrow's class uh, is with Bhakti Sangha devotees at 12.20 uh, in the afternoon. And the verse is uh, 6.3.16. Uh, yes. So 20, minutes, 20 minutes later than the usual time. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, devotees, for joining. Um, thank you, Maharaj, for joining. Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vya Evacha, Patitanam, Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo, Nama Namaha, Samaveta Bhakta Vrindaki, Jai, His Holiness Chandamali Maharaj Ki, Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Jai. Jai. Thank you very, very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for today. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna.